You ready? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners first-hand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Thank you, Jason. Like Jason said, I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. Before we start, I want to introduce my co-host, who you just heard from, Jason Malik, from his own Arise studio in Conway, Arkansas. Say hello, Jason. Hello, Carrie. If right now you're sitting at your computer, you might want to watch us live on Facebook at flagandbanner.com's Facebook page. It's kind of fun to see what goes on behind the scenes and at the breaks, and it's in real time, which I love everything to be in real time. It's just exciting. Uh, I think today we're only going to broadcast on Facebook for the first 15 minutes at the break. We'll sign off with Facebook, and you'll have to log in, you Facebook watchers, to 88.3 FM KABF. Uh, if for some reason you miss any part of today's show and want to hear it again or share it, there's a way, and Jason is here to tell you how. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on Radio Show. There you may join our email list or like us on Facebook, thus getting a reminder notification of the day of the show and a sneak peek of that day's guests. And if you'd like to be an underwriter of any UIYB shows, send an email to marketing at flagandbanner.com. That's marketing at flagandbanner.com. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you, Jason. If you're tuning into this broadcast for the first time, welcome. And if you're a returning fan, you probably know this next part by heart, but at the risk of being boring, we must repeat ourselves for the newcomers. And besides that, it gives my guest a chance to settle into their seat. This show up in your business with me, Carrie McCoy, began as a platform for small business owners and a guest to pay forward our experiential knowledge in a conversational way. Originally, my team and I thought it would speak to entrepreneurs and want to be entrepreneurs, but it seems to have a wider audience appeal because... After all, who isn't inspired by everyday people's American-made stories? To see people in their totality is humanizing. We all thirst to connect and make sense of an overcomplicated world. And on this show, we have the luxury of time to go deeper than a mere soundbite or a headlight. And my favorite part, we always learn something. It's no secret that successful people work hard, but other common traits found in many of my guests are the heart of a teacher, belief in a higher power, and creativity because business in itself is creative. My guest today is the multifaceted and uber creative Miss Garbo Hearn, founder and visionary of Hearn Fine Art Gallery, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisal Services, and Pyramid Arts Books and Custom Framings. And I just found out you have a uh, auction house. Yes, with my husband. No, no, all of this is of with course. your husband. All of this is with him. The consortium. Yes. Before taking this entrepreneurial leap, Garbo was a pediatric intensive care nurse at Arkansas Children's Hospital. What a difference. She received her nursing degree from the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville and her appraisal studies and certificate from New York University. Miss Hearn and her husband, Dr. Archie Hearn, are busy proprietors. They're side-by-side businesses. Hearn Family Clinic, Hearn Fine Art Gallery, and Pyramid Art Books and Framings are all nestled together in the historic Dunbar neighborhood in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, and if that's not enough, she and her husband co-wrote two decades of African-American art, Hearn Fine Art, 1988 through 2008, and you are on the board of Arkansans for the Arts, whose mission is to advance the economy of art in Arkansas. I just found that out yesterday. Today, we'll find out how and why Garbo went from an intensive care nurse at Children's Hospital to a business owner, author, and art enthusiast. It's a pleasure to welcome to the table the creative, hardworking, and if you're looking at her on Facebook, sweet, smiling entrepreneur, Miss Garbo Hearn. Well, thank you. For Every the... time I have a girl on, I want to say, girl, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to correct you. Okay. I did graduate from UAMS here in Little Rock. When I oh, got you did? my nurse practitioner 
here. They went to U- UA Fayetteville for two years and then transferred here and finished in the UAMS nursing program. Okay, good. I'm glad so, you yes. fixed it. UAMS. UAMS. That's a great, that's a great, great uh, place. Great, great place. place. Yes. Uh, you, uh, your husband, our, Dr. Archie Hearn, mm-hmm. did you meet him while you were a nurse? Yes, I did. I That's figured. a whole nother hour show, so oh, we don't want to go I, I, into all of that. But, oh, yeah, you know, come the doctor on. nurse story. A little bit. No, just a little bit. Just know. a little bit. I love the romantic side of life. I mean, so you're a nurse, you're going to UAMS, you start practicing at UAMS, and he's already there practicing? No, actually, he came from California. He was doing his residency at Howard in D.C. and came to complete a public health obligation in Arkansas. So that's how we met. He had a community clinic here. and But you're at UAMS. How do you meet somebody in a community clinic? Well, I graduated from UAMS. I worked at Children's Hospital. And his community and clinic was His associated. community clinic was not associated. I mean, you know, you run into people. I mean, it is what it is. It was exciting. He Still uh, is. He, what, what about him impressed you? Very smart. Is he? Very smart, innovative, you know, Loves to take risks, so. He moved from California to Arkansas? California, D.C., Ohio, Arkansas. Is he in culture shock? Um, Not necessarily, and he did something about it, because he said, hey, we're going to open an art gallery and bookstore. I was like, okay, let's try it. I was going to ask you if that was his idea or your idea. His idea. He started collecting art in college. He lived with an art professor, understood the value and the need for art, and of course, here in, in Little Rock at the time, there was not a lot of art, uh, quality African-American art represented in a gallery setting. So we did it. There wasn't probably any. No, it wasn't. So you were impressed by him. You're working at the university. I mean, you're working at Children's Hospital and you're thinking, you're thinking this is too stressful. Was there an event that happened that well, made actually, you say? Well, actually, I left Children's Hospital and I started working in a clinic and I worked and I had my own business. I was doing some consulting for surgeons in terms of checking patients as to how much education they got, how well they did. If you compare telling a patient what to expect when they get out of surgery, what to eat and just how to take manage their own care as opposed to just checking in the normal hospital procedures because nurses, hospital nurses are very, very busy. And education is not clearly the first thing they have to do is make sure you understand what's going on with you. So I did a little of that, just comparing that for with surgeons. And so I was, you know, busy. So you're at Children's Hospital working in intensive care. Let me just wrap my mind around this. And Mm -hmm. you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I, I don't know how you can see those babies. Well, no. I mean, with pediatric intensive care, you could have a patient from zero to 18. Okay. So when they come into intensive care, they're either going to stay there a couple of days and go upstairs or they meet their maker. At either way, mm. it's, not, it's a short period of time that you're with that patient. But, you know, you have to make sure How it's total deal? care. How do you deal with that? How do you separate yourself from that? Well, every patient is a human being and you want to do the best for them at the time of what they need. And, you know, generally they have good outcomes and that was the beauty of it. So I love that. Um, We got married, had children. Um, They don't want to hear my child has a fever. Uh They want you to come to work because you're trained specially to work in that setting. So there's not a lot of people that can replace you. But at any rate, the need... For um, a gallery and bookstore took on, I mean, I had, I was in between, I was actually on leave and I was with my, having my second child. Mm -hmm. And so between that and going back to work, wasn't that attractive. So in that period of time, we opened the gallery. So that was Hadn't gone back. Hadn't gone back. Hadn't gone back. So that was the event that changed everything as you were pregnant and you knew that going back to work as a nurse was going to be so demanding. Being right. A already having a baby. I had a baby uh-huh. and I was about to have a second one. So, you know, this was just a, a, a great opportunity for me to be the mother I wanted to be, keep my children with me, that kind of thing. So I had the opportunity to do that and they came to work. You know, I brought them and some people thought we had a nursery going on. <laughs> But it was a fun experience, and uh, we moved. We started out on 12th and Fair Park, very small space, and then we moved down on Main Street, 1308 Main Street. We were there for like nine years. Then we moved to the River Market District, 
Mm -hmm. Stay there about nine years. And now we're home in the Dunbar Historic Community on Wright and Chester. So Uh, your husband has his office right next to you. Yes. Was he always in that neighborhood? No. I mean, actually, he was in the he's been around. He was on 12th Street as well. He was on 13th. He had a clinic on Louisiana. He was in the doctor's building. And Chanel, he's moved around a lot. And then we both looked at each other at, at some point and said, we've both been renting for way too long. That's so hard. let's find a space. And, you know, we could probably have built a golden quarter with all the rent we paid. So that, you know, mm-hmm. if you've been in business for as long as we had been at least 20, 20 years for me, and he had probably been 25, 26 years. So it just made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of, before we go to a break, for those of the people we're going to, we're going to get off nursing, but, but before, but for uh, nurses are angels. Yes. I hate to hear that yes, we, yes, don't, yes. we lost you because you're no, so I awesome. I still have my license. Yeah, I am but still licensed to nurse and I can. So you're, beware of pool nurses. I can show up any day. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, aura, I'm just kidding. Your no, I'm just aura kidding. is so nurturing and loving and sweet. I mean, I would love to have you as my nurse ever. So if, for people, that, a lot of people are going into nursing because we need more of them and yes, they're angels. Definitely. Uh, what are, do you have any advice for anybody out there that wants to be a nurse before we go to a break? Well, I think if it's, if, if it's in you, you can do it and you want to do it. You love caring and helping people. And now you have to know technology because nursing is a lot of technology these days. They take blood pressures with an instrument. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just so many different things that are going on. You know, technology has changed every um, area. So I think it's exciting. I think. But did you always want to be a nurse when you were I a kid? I always did. My parents both were educators and both tailors. They both were. What do you mean, tailors? Tailors. They graduated from Tuskegee University and they were tailors. Oh, sewing. Both sewing. That's what so I went to they school made for. all of our clothes. I love it. That's I was very artistic. Always upset because I was like, oh, why, why, why can't I just go to Penny's or Sears like everybody else? I never realized just exactly what I was growing up in the the creativity there. There were two sewing machines. They were always sewing. And my mother was a, a second grade teacher. My dad was a principal. So I said, oh, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be a tailor. I'm going to be a nurse. But so that's I why you have this that. love of learning. Yes, I think so. And then they sewed in the evenings and on the weekends. Yes. What, what did they sew? Uh, they made patterns. They made, Evening you know, gowns. Uh, patterns dresses. They were, I have uh, two sisters and a brother. So they made all our all clothes, clothes. And we were the best dressed and didn't even realize it, I don't think. Did your mother do this at Christmas time? Sew labels off of clothes into your clothes so that you wouldn't know that they made them? Mm-mm. My mother did that because I, I was exactly like you. I was like, yeah. Mother, why are you making all my clothes? I didn't realize. I know. And she'd, so she cut labels out of old yeah. clothes and sew them into our clothes to try to trick Never us. did that. Never <laughs> did that. They would say, okay, it's time for you to get a new coat. What color do you want? What kind of material? I was like, <laughs> A cult too. Come on, now. but you know it was an experience. I love that story. The hardworking parents it paid off because yes. you're hardworking too. This yes. is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Miss Garbo Hearn, founder and owner of Hearn Fine Art Gallery, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisal Services, Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing, Framing, and her auction house. We'll find out what it's like to be her, an art lover, author, proprietor, and about her and her husband husband's real estate real estate decisions to invest in the historic but distressed Dunbar neighborhood in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. And before the show ends, we'll have her tell us about the current artists on display at her upcoming events and exhibitions. We'll be back after the break. Boost morale and patriotism with a new flag or flagpole from Arkansas'sFlagandBanner.com. We have poles, hardware, accessories, maintenance support, installation, and custom flags. We have flags of all kinds for the sports enthusiast, the world traveler, or history buff. We have them all. Bring in your old flag and get $5 off a new one. Consult the experts at ArkansasFlagandBanner.com. Come shop our historic location at 800 West Knight Street in Little Rock or visit us online at FlagandBanner.com. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed, starting with door-to-door sales, then telemarketing, to mail order and catalog sales. And now, a third of their sales come via the internet. 
This past year, Flag and Banner added another internet feature, live chatting. Over time, Carrie's business and leadership knowledge grew. As early as 2004, she began sharing this knowledge on her weekly blog. And in 2009, she founded a nonprofit Friends of Dreamland Ballroom. And in 2014, Brave Magazine was launched. Today, she's branched out to the radio with this very production, podcast, and live stream on Facebook. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between her and her guest about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that we hope you'll find interesting and inspiring. If you'd like to ask Carrie a question, share your story, or underwrite any of our past or present shows, send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org or message her on flagandbanners.com Facebook page. Back to you, Carrie. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Miss Garbo Hearn, founder and owner of Hearn Fine Art Gallery, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisal Services, and Pyramid Art Book and Custom Framing in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. Before the break, we talked about Garbo growing up in an academic family with a mother and fathers who were teachers, about them sewing all of her clothes and how they were entrepreneurs and creative people uh, when she was young and that that, rubbed, that hard work rubbed off on her and that she always wanted to be a nurse and she grew up and became a nurse and she met her doctor husband and then they became entrepreneurs when her family was started. So that's where we're up to if you missed any of it. Um, so and then we just, so now we're going to move into how you decided on art as a career. You said your husband was the doctor. Yes. Dr. Hearn was a art uh, collector. Art collector. I started collecting in college. Uh, when That's he moved to unusual, Arkansas, actually. yeah, moved to Arkansas and realized there was a void, uh, especially as it relates to African American culture. So henceforth, we started Pyramid. It was Pyramid Gallery. Yeah, I saw so that. we've changed our name over the years as the business has evolved. Uh, we showcase primarily prints and work by local African American artists. We moved quickly into. We added a bookstore and the service of custom picture framing because whatever I framed, nobody liked the match. I like wanted to change. So the customer service person that I am, I was like, mm-hmm. I'll change it and I'll make it happen. So I was spending a lot more time at the framer than I was at my business. So we ended up buying uh, a frame shop that went out of business, their supplies. And then we ended up hiring a framer and henceforth we became custom picture framers. And then, of course, books are just the the source of any knowledge is power. You got to read for yourself. And having a bookstore was so important to our business to help traffic and just the whole educational process of being a platform for local, regional and national authors and artists. So it just kind of melded together. So the the pyramid was first. It was pyramid art. Pyramid Gallery, Gallery. Mm -hmm. then it became Pyramid Gallery and Books. And then we moved to the River Market District. We decided to... You were the first to move to the River Market. Yes, we were on the first floor. We were next to where the Museum of Discovery. We were there before the Museum of Discovery. And, you know, several restaurants on the afternoon. So we outlived all those. It's a beautiful place to have an art gallery. gallery. Yes, it was. And, And the beauty of it was we initially, we came from Main Street, and we had a sign on our building because we wanted to build the space, but we didn't get the loan. Forgot to take the sign down and someone bought the building. So had to move. There we go. That's so, the place on Main Street. That was the place on Main Street, 1308 Main Street. And so we moved into the River Market District and we got to build out the space the way we wanted to. So it was kind of like the best of both worlds. So I still got a new space. Wasn't mine, but I was able to. And we were right in the center of that building. And mm-hmm. it was it was smaller, very compact. But, you know, we got the job done. And we grew our business there. And, Is that uh, when you changed your name? Yes. From Pyramid? From Pyramid. Well, I kept art. Pyramid. I kept Pyramid. I read an article that said, you know, if you believe in your business, put your name on it. And it also said you got to be sure that people know what you do is in your name. So I had all this space. I said, okay, I see it here. Hearn Fine Art. And I love then it. Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing again explains I kept my roots in Pyramid because 
pyramid came from the fact that the pyramids are always going to be there. You mm-hmm. go to Egypt, they've been there. They began in the beginning of time. So I figured everlasting. That's why I put pyramid in the beginning. Well, and most, I think I read where you said most art galleries don't last more than five, five years. years. Five years is the turning point of and when you're going to make it. And so now we're starting on year 31. We opened in 1988. So, I mean, but every year is just like the beginning. Every year is the new year for me. So I, I can't really, I know it's been 30 years, but I say, I, I hope I have 30 more years. What was it like starting your business? What I mean, did you think, how do you even, did you use your own money? Did you think, this is, this is going to be, Harder than I think it is, or did you think it was going to be easy and it turned out to be harder than you thought? That's well, what I really most people didn't. Say. It was a challenge. It was something that my husband wanted to do. He wanted me to help him. Someone had to um, be that person that actually had a real job that had to support the family. So but that I knew was him. That was him. And so I had the opportunity to take this dream that he had and it became mine. And I just, I taught myself the business of art and the business of just being in business at all. And, you know, working as an intensive care nurse, you had to understand how to prioritize what needed to be done. So that really prepared me to be a business owner. Um I went in with so many unknowns. If I probably had known the unknowns, I probably would never have done it. What was different that you think that, what was something that happened that you thought, wow, I didn't expect that? I I think Mm -hmm. that when I sold my first piece of original art, I was just completely shocked. (laughs) I was like, oh my God, it didn't take probably, probably six months. In that, because, you know, we were selling prints and posters and, you know, the whole just getting to understand and then meeting artists. And as my uh, knowledge of business and art grew, I realized that I was doing my customers a disservice by not offering them original art. Because art is the basis of our civilization. It tells our story. And why would you spend three hundred dollars on a frame on a fifty dollar print? When you can own an original. Yeah. Okay. And you want that and it builds generational wealth. So it's a wealth building piece that art, if you are interested in collecting. And, you know, the more art, you know, there were so many artists that had never been to Arkansas that we brought and we gave them um, fine art exhibitions and they met long life you know, friends because of just coming just because of our existence. So that's why I had to differentiate the pyramid art, the decorative art from the fine art to yeah. move into another level and just expose myself to other people who didn't necessarily want to show in a frame shop. Yeah. When um, when did you decide that you wanted to be an appraiser? Well, that came in 2004. Um, so you've been my in business, youngest, uh, let's see, 18, 16 years now. Yes. And people would come to me, what's this worth? What's this worth? I bought this from you 10 years ago. What is it worth now? And I realized that that was something I, I needed to teach myself. I needed to go and figure out how to how to do this appropriately. So I went to NYU and I did a six week intensive course. Did you live up there? Yes. Stay there for six weeks. Oh, how fun. I took my um, youngest daughter. She was, a, I think she was a sophomore in our junior in high school. And so she went with me and she stayed with Actually, her first babysitter in Connecticut. So she stayed with her, and I went to NYU, and I used to see her on the weekends. Did I you think. stay in a dorm? I did. I How did. old are you when you were doing this? Let's see. I don't remember. It was 2004, doing the math. I had to be in my 40s. How adventurous. Yeah. But I needed to know how to do it. And I wasn't the online person and I wanted, and, you know, the idea of going there for six weeks. They took us all over New York. They took us to, you know, every museum, auction house. And I just learned how to do it. And, and you then, came home or you changed? Um, yes, I was ready to be home. I loved, I know I, why I live in Arkansas mm-hmm. and I love Arkansas. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a six week adventure. Did your husband come up to see you? He did. came at the end. 
you know. And then I actually had um, a couple of artists that I represent from New York. So while I was there, I was working on a, I did an exhibit there. So I took, I spent six weeks organizing that practice. I can't just do one thing at a time, so yeah. of course. No, you can't. Uh, so that was really fun. That's that's wonderful. So you've created all these relationships that last a long time through all your art connections. Right. So it's, you know, like you evolve from a decorative art to fine art to appraising art. And then the auction house piece is just the next level of people as they downsize, as they move on and buy better art or, you know, they want to a way to move it. I don't think people realize that art is kind of generational wealth. If it they'll is. Keep on, if, they'll it keep, is. if they'll hang on to if it. If they hang on to it, they keep their paperwork. And if they, you know, you should never buy art to sell it. You should buy art because you love it. And it, that's right. And you should know that it is a value because of just because that's just good business if you're collecting original art. But then from there, if you want to give it to your children, you know, there's such the sentimentality of buying from an artist, getting to know that artist and to watch that artist grow, that you don't want to part with it. And hopefully that you instill the same love of art in your children. I love that. You said this. This is a quote you have said that I think is really nice. You said you and your husband opened Pyramid Gallery, which is now Hearn Fine Art Gallery in 1988 because you felt it was important for people to experience African-American culture through the arts, and it was a niche market that wasn't being served. Mm -hmm. Are you still the only people serving it? No, I mean, we have Mosaic Templars Cultural Center in downtown Little Rock. There are uh, galleries in Northwest Arkansas, and the House of Art in North Little Rock. So there are people who are those African American they are genres. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm excited that uh, what we've done has taken hold, and people are taking that leap and doing it as well. So Pine Bluff, there's a gallery. Uh, Henry Linton has opened mm-hmm. his own studio. Oh, he has. Yeah. So it's exciting to see people grow and to see the whole art market just explode. African-American art is really on the upswing now. If you look at um, last year, Crystal Bridges had the Soul of a Nation exhibition that went from Arkansas to Brooklyn, and now it's headed to Los Angeles. It's going to open at the the Broad in March, actually. Good. So, so, you know, so you've was... moved everybody down to Wright Avenue in the Dunbar neighborhood. Yes. Uh, I, do you feel like that was a great move? Definitely. I mean, where can you building. find a, a piece of property with a stoplight already there? That all, that tells you right there you got traffic. That's right. You know, they have to stop. You have your to building. stop. Your neighbors are the Sue Cowan Williams Library, Allison Church, Presbyterian Church, the oldest African American school in the state of Arkansas, Dunbar. Dunbar, which will be celebrating ninety years this year, a hundred years in twenty twenty nine. So, I mean. What kind of, I mean, that's the best neighbors you could actually have. So, And your building is beautiful. If anybody goes by what's uh, on the corner of Wright Avenue and, and Chester, and Chester yes. it's, if you, you do, you sit right at that stoplight and you go, mm-hmm. oh, that's a nice building. And it has your name, Hearn, all over it. So you took advantage of what that man told you. If you're proud of it, put your name on it. You did. Yeah. It's, so if you put your name on it, you know you're representing you. Everything you do, you go out. So that's why it's important if you believe in it. If you believe in it. All right. This is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Miss Garbo Hearn, founder and owner of Hearn Fine Art Jewelry. Hearn Jewelry Gallery. Oh, gallery. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisal Services and Pyramid Art Books Custom Framing and an Auction House. We'll continue talking about her consortium business of businesses, their challenges and successes, the work she's doing at Arkansans for the Arts, a nonprofit that advocates the arts, art education, and the creative economy in Arkansas. And before the show ends, we'll have her tell us about the artists that are currently on display and her upcoming events and exhibitions. We'll be back after the break. Boost morale and patriotism with a new flag or flagpole from Arkansas's flagandbanner.com. We have poles, hardware, accessories, maintenance support, installation, and custom flags. We have flags of all kind for the sports enthusiast, the world traveler, or history buff. We have them all. Bring in your old flag and get $5 off a new one. Consult the experts at arkansasflagandbanner.com. Come shop our historic location at 800 West Knight Street in Little Rock or visit us online at flagandbanner.com. 
Flag and Banner is proud to underwrite Up in Your Business with Carrie McCoy. This weekly radio show and podcast offers listeners firsthand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk taking, and the commonalities of successful people shared in a conversational interview with Carrie. Along with this radio show, flagandbanner.com publishes a free biannual magazine called Brave. First published in October 2014, this magazine celebrates and inspires readers through its human interest in storytelling. The Department of Arkansas Heritage recognized Brave Magazine's documentation of American life and microfishes all editions for the Arkansas State Archives. Free subscription and advertising opportunities for the upcoming Spring 2019 edition are available at flagandbanner.com by selecting Magazine where you can read previous stories and learn about advertising opportunities. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Miss Garbo Hearn, founder and owner of her own consortium. Somebody called it, what do you call it, a consortium? But we looked it up. It's actually pronounced consortium. consortium. Thank you. You learn something every day. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll learn something on this show. It is the word for the day. And uh, anyway, her consortium is Hearn Fine Art Gallery, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisals, and Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing in the downtown Little Rock, Arkansas area. And uh, your husband's, I didn't even put this in there, your husband's Hearn Family Clinic yes. is also right there. Right there. Uh, so we Hearn. take care of the soul. You sure do. All the way. All the Inside way. and out. Inside. Yeah. Mind, body, and Inside. spirit. Exactly. That's that's right. And then you've also got another one. You started the... Uh, Hearn Southern Auction House. Yeah, that's a consortium. And let me, let me just tell everybody the word for the day is consortium, and it means an association typically of several business companies. If that is not what that is, I don't know what is. Yeah, we take it to the next level. God, y'all do. Y'all are busy. <laughs> Create business people are so creative. They're always creating businesses. Um, I, here's another quote you said that I absolutely oh my love. Quotes. Where are you getting these from? Because <laughs> I, I do my homework. Okay. But I do want to tell everybody if they've missed any part of this show that they can go listen to um, a podcast of it that'll be made available next week where we talk about how you transitioned from a nurse to this entrepreneur and art critic that you are. I don't know if you're a critic. Mm, but, a critic. <laughs> but you're an art enthusiast, let's yes, say. Yes, art enthusiast. Yes. So here is your quote, and I love this. This is my favorite quote you said that I read of all the things, of all the interviews you did. Art is important because it conveys people's struggles and triumphs and solidifies my belief that we are more alike than we are different. That's true. That's true. We are more alike than we're different. Mm -hmm. I see it every day. I love that. So how do artists, how do you find artists for your shows? You went to New York and met some. Is it all just networking? Well, it's a lot of networking. You meet artists who know other artists. And my goal is, you know, I probably have about 55 to 60 artists that I've worked with over the lifetime of the gallery. And my goal is to work with artists who are passionate about what they do. They have a signature technique. You know their work without looking at them. You recognize them. it. We recognize it. And, you know, having, teaching people how to invest in themselves and generational wealth, you got to have all levels of art. So that's why I have, you know, emerging mid-career and master artists so that you can move in all circles and educate yourself so, and uh, all of that. Would, would so, would you say something? What was the first one? Something mid, and then emerging. Mass, emerging. So you that's, know, that's the affordable the, ones. Well, I would say all of them can be affordable because you know we have that famous, uh, we call it installment plan. Some people call it layaway. Oh, I see. You can do whatever you want if you want a piece of art. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go, some people when you go buy a car, do you go in a, do you go buy a car and say I'll just take that one and write a check for thirty or forty thousand dollars? You wish go I did. in there. I wish I could with an idea that you're going to pay on it, yeah, right? But right. the thing about art as opposed to a car, when you get that piece of art on your wall at home, it's going to be worth more than that car. Yeah, it is. You know, so I say Uber, ride the bus, buy art. It's just the enjoyment of having art in your home. I did not become interested in art. I didn't know why people liked it. I didn't, couldn't tell a print from anything else till I probably got to be uh, in my late 30s. Mm -hmm. And somewhere around there, 
and I had lots of artist friends. Somewhere around there, um, I ended up buying a piece of art inexpensively from somebody and hung it up. Mm-hmm. And I have, and it's it's like an addiction. Right. It's weird. Right. All of a sudden, you're looking at it all the time. You're paying and, attention to it. And then you want another piece. And you want, want another, another piece. One, and another you go piece. on these buying binges. Yeah. Have you done that? Yeah, I did that down in New Orleans in the mm-hmm. French Quarters. Yeah. All the local painters and artists down there. Yeah, I bought a bunch of stuff for the studio. Mm-hmm. You, just kinda get, you just kind of get. You just kind of. Yeah. And then you get home and you're like, oh, but then I did you it. love it. Yeah, I did and I want more and more now. And more and more. Mm-hmm. I, had, I had a client come in. It was a Friday afternoon and she said, I'm having an art attack. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> she said, I'm having an art attack. I just want to buy some art. And I was like, let me help you. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, right, she, yeah. she ended up taking home about four or five pieces. And so that Monday I called her up and I was like, you know, are you OK? Because, you know, you can bring it back. You don't have to keep oh, them. Because so the thing sweet. about it is, I, while I love impulsive buyers, I want the experience of owning art to be so exciting that it, it feels good. No buyer's regret. No, no mm-hmm. buyer's regret. So, but she kept them all. I was like, oh my gosh, that was just an amazing day for me. You like Friday night art that we have in Second Friday, Friday, Friday night? night. Yeah, we actually started that experience back when we were in the River Market District. Deborah Wood and I. You started and that? And we I was part of the group that started it with the Arkansas Times. Uh-huh. And it started in the River Market because that was supposed to be the cultural district. Yeah. And uh, with the Cal system. And so there were like, I like seven or eight places that you could stop and and uh, sip and look at art and the second Friday art night. And it's still going on. We're out of that loop now because we're in the Dunbar community. And they tried. And, you know, do we have the trolleys? But it just, you know, we are a walking, driving people. Mm-hmm. We don't necessarily like to get on buses and go places within the community. So it didn't work for us to stay a part of it, but it's still going strong. So you didn't do it, you don't do it anymore? You're not you're not on the trolley I'm system? I'm not on the trolley system because it doesn't, you know, we're, it doesn't come all the way over to... Well, I bet it would if you asked since you got power and pull and you're on the Arkansas for the Arts group. Oh, yeah. You but could get it's it. all good. It's and fine. actually, tonight we're going to be uh, open late with Sue Cow and Williams Library. So we're going to have our own kind of, I guess, whatever Friday night this is. Is this the fourth Friday, Thursday? What, Start, what is it? Are you starting another we're art We're starting night? a little art <laughs> night, another little art <laughs> night going on with the library. So, so is it? That's good. So you uh, you started framing because your customers wanted you to frame. Yes. And um, uh, it's probably the most lucrative part of your business. I was at your business yesterday. I popped in there to see what you do before the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, son Matt and I did. And you had, how many people were back there, Matt? Five people framing? Four people framing? A no, lot. no. I have two um, framers. Well, who were the rest of those people? They may have been clients. I don't no. know. But it's only two people, and I have I have a, a bookseller, a literary person, and then my manager. So I do have four employees. Oh, maybe so. Wait, just, maybe we all maybe, might have been in the background. They're all back there taking a break. We're taking a break. No, yeah. everybody. I mean, we are family. Mm-hmm. Um, my manager, her name is Patrice Brown. She's been with me twenty nine years. Mm-hmm. Bef- between the two framers, they have twenty five years experience. So we're good seasoned. Framers. Yeah, good you framer. gotta have a good framer. Would you say your framing is your most lucrative business? I would not say that, no. You think art? I think it it's a combination. Sometimes it's books. Sometimes it's framing. Sometimes, it, you know, it all, they all go hand in hand. I mean, the framers, we do framing for people. We are their custom picture framer. They just drop it off just like they're going to the cleaners. They say, just frame it. You know what I want. But we frame primarily for our artists because artists are not framers. Oh. And we do have to protect the original artwork and there's certain things that have to be done, certain types of materials that you must use for original art. So we really started our frame shop to protect the artist and the art. But anybody can come down. But there anybody can come. I mean, we do a lot of degrees. I mean, we, you can frame anything. I saw a bank had you had a I, not to be nosy, but I saw an order for from yeah, some bank. Yeah, we work down with there. you know, know our bank, you're... the people that we support support us. You know, so mm-hmm. we work with you know local banks. Yes. So you started off with regional artists, local artists, local artists, artists but and you're now then national? we moved regional, national. We have some international artists that we work with. So you know, we've grown. Um, 
Luckily, there's not a lot of competition for African-American fine arts. So artists talk to other artists. And, you know, Arkansas is a, is a state with a lot of rich and powerful people who collect art. So why not come to Arkansas and give it a try? Now you've also started your uh, auction house. Tell us about that. The auction house started about five years ago as a result of my husband just looking into that other business model of when people downsize and what to do with their art. So, so why not? So you get to sell it the first time and then you get to sell you it can again resell later. It, resell it. You know? Your husband's a good business Yeah, he's man. very, very smart. Mm-hmm. Very, very smart. So yeah. who's the auctioneer? He is. He, 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 he got it. the license and he does. He's, I'm the appraiser and he's the auctioneer. And then how often do you have auctions? Well, we mostly is online. And oh. we have had um, at least two uh, fall and summer auctions, but it hasn't really taken as no, yeah, not it's, yet. It takes a lot. Of work. It takes a lot of work to get that out there, but mostly we do online auctions. Uh, it's like eBay. Yeah, uh-huh. similar to eBay. So it's always something online that you can go out and you can buy. You, you can buy pro- it now. You probably know my my cousin in law, Kate Askew. I from do. The Yellow Dog Press. I do. Yellow Dog she's Press. She's also an appraiser. Yes. And she's also sells online. Mm-hmm. And she got her auctions license and did not really like it. Yeah. But she does sell online. But she's quit selling on a lot of the websites because it's too cumbersome. Yeah. You got to have people that, you know, t- it's technology. You got to have people that know how to put it up, how to it's make it look good. It's a lot of work. So that's why we have young people in our life. That's why we work <laughs> with students. We love students and they come in, they go. Let's talk about they, your students. You work with the students from Philander Smith College and the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Yes. Is that what you work with them? Well, I mean, some of our best employees have come from those two institutions. They've, you know, started with us when they were freshmen, graduated on and gone on to their careers. But the beauty of working, I think, with me is that I understand you're here to go to school. I am not your first priority, but when you're with me. You're taking care of my business. But if you have a test, if you need to be mm-hmm. off, it's fine. What do you have them do? Are well, they, they, you know, different. Do social media for you? Some do social media. Some do. Yeah. It depends on their area of expertise. I mean, we everybody does everything in my space. So, so we think, got a project. Mm-hmm. You know, you do this, you do that. You get ready for events. Tell me sales. how you might get those students down there at the school because I've been thinking about doing that at Flag and Banner, and I don't know exactly. Do you do you have an event, and so you call up the department, like say if you want, you're going to have an event and you want somebody that. Uh, Actually, it's 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 word of mouth. I don't work with a particular person at school. each one of those mm-hmm. institutions, but Philander is walking distance from the gallery. So you and know people over there. You I know call. people over there and then, you know, they'll send somebody, you know, they'll come over and if they're interested and what, you're, it and makes, what you've got to do. And it's more like piecemeal work. So it's a short period of time while you work on something. Right. Have you ever thought about hiring somebody full time for social media for your company? I have not thought about that as, as I don't really do social media. Mm-hmm. So I don't really understand. I've never bought anything from looking at Facebook, Instagram. That's just never been my forte. So I really don't delve too much into what I don't understand, but I do understand that it's important. Yeah. So my daughter, yeah. who Anna, who is, um, she handles all my social media ah. and she puts all our stuff out there. And I, and I know that it's important because we do get people that come in. And so I'm not crazy that I just but I don't think that I would put a person there to do that full time especially when I have my daughter to do it for that's me. right <laughs> is this is uh so it is a family business your consortium is a family mm-hmm. business it's you and your husband is your daughter going to join you I hope so she has a uh, master's degree in art history from the University oh. of Cincinnati but her heart is in teaching like your so mother she wants father. to she's a teacher in, at heart I have uh, my youngest daughter is in North Carolina she's doing her first year as an emergency room resident 
Oh my gosh, there really are like and your then, parents. And then uh, my son is an entrepreneur. He's in sales and, and he works for Goddess Office Products and he does some online sales and he comes and helps me. Is he in Little Rock? He's here in Little Rock. And then I have another son that's in, um, you have four kids. in New York at Columbia University. He works in the alumni department and does their marketing for the alumni. So they're all their own creative spirits. So that's, who knows? So you got one in marketing. One that's going to be a teacher like your parents. One that's going to be a nurse like you. No, my or doctor. Is a nurse. She's a doctor. Oh, she's, she's a She's an emergency room resident oh, in North Carolina. Like so she graduated dad. from UAMS. Like her dad. Yes. So she is a doctor. <laughs> we, we, that's wonderful. Uh, this, let me tell everybody that you're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and that I'm speaking today with Ms. Garbo Hearn, founder and owner of Hearn Fine Art Gallery, Hearn Fine Art Consulting and Appraisal Services, and Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing in downtown Little Rock. It's a consortium of her family, her and her husband, Dr. Hearn. What's your husband's first name? Archie. Dr. Archie Hearn. And uh, they have just taken something that they're passionate about, and they've turned it into a gallery and a framing company, even even though your background is in was originally in nursing and you spent time and money on your nursing degree. I did. My dad was like, are you serious? Uh, Arkansans for the Arts. Yes. That is your passion and its yes. mission. Yes, yes, I went yes, to yes. its website and its mission is to advance the arts arts education and the creative economy of Arkansas. I love the words creative economy of Arkansas. Yes. That's good. Tell us about Arkansans for the Arts. So Arkansans for the Arts is a statewide arts advocacy group. Uh, we are made of a board and advisors. So we are a working board right now. We don't have an executive director. So we do the work. There are eight different committees that come together that make this all happen. Um, in 2014, we were formed as a uh, from, as a result of a grant from the Wingate Foundation and Americans for the Arts. We in what were, year? 2014. Okay. We were one of five states that did not have an arts advocacy group. So they wanted to see what happens with states that don't have arts advocacy groups and states that have strong ones as it relates to arts education. So it was a three year pilot project that um, a group studied arts education in Arkansas. And so there was a paper written from that. And so after that was over, here we are, the hard work must begin, you know, we must understand what is the importance of advocating for the arts in Arkansas and realizing that you, you're you not going to get anybody's attention unless you're talking about something that hits them where their heart is. And that's the creative economy. And then if you look at the arts and what they do for the creative economy in Arkansas, every part of our state has their own successful art story. Crystal Bridges. I mean, need I say more? Mm -hmm. Mountain View. What's in Mountain View? Mountain View is where the um, culture, what is it? Uh, I know they've got big music, don't they? Music, but it's the craft. The craft, oh, the craft school craft started mm -hmm. in 1941 oh. in El Dorado, the Murphy's Arts District. You look at Pine Bluff, the murals. I mean, so every part of Arkansas has their own successful art story. But And if you think about arts other than, you know, visual, theater, drama, dance. Think about culinary. Think about fashion. Think about film. Think about what you do. Business. All of these people have to have a creative output, and that, that stems and in, 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 in works with our economy. If you look at health care, look at all the beautiful art that they put in the hospitals. Oh, yeah, they do a lot you of You think art. about art therapy. Mm -hmm. You think about dance therapy, all of that stems from the creative spirit. And you have to be able to, in terms of arts education, it starts young. Mm -hmm. You never know what will happen if you don't think of, you know, use both sides of your brain. So we've got to make sure that there's funding for arts education. So Arkansas for the Arts looked at other successful advocacy uh, groups in the United States. And what we were missing was a legislative arts caucus. So we got to work with Senator Joyce Elliott and, you know, just sat with her and gave her the numbers in terms of all of the disciplines that bring this creative economy in Arkansas. And so when you talk money, 
You got to be able to back it up. Mm -hmm. And so we convinced her to start a legislative arts caucus. So that was formed. And November of last year, we had our first arts advocacy day at the Capitol. And the Arts Caucus was announced. And so that's really exciting. And that's one of the things we're really proud of. Uh, we are working with building student art leaders on the campus of UCA. Uh, they're forming UCA students for the arts. And we're hoping to take that model to every two year and four year college in Arkansas because we have to build student art leaders. We've got to have people who understand what is the NEA? What does the NEA do? The National Endowment for the Arts. You know, they were seeking $155 million to celebrate the arts or, you know, what do they do? And so what is Mid-America Arts Alliance? What is NASA? Who are the people that control the arts? So we must understand that and have and, and build patrons. So that's our goal with making sure that we play a part. If you're not at the table, especially politically, we're just out here talking. Yeah. So we're at the table. We're hoping to get a seat for the arts on the Economic Development Commission. Right now, the arts are not there. I can't believe that. But, you know, nobody's paying attention. I mean, if you think about politics, how many politicians run on the arts? How many even mention it in their speeches? Because it's a given. It's one of those things we take for granted. That's there, but it's not going to always be there if we don't pay attention and make sure arts education is funded appropriately and that we are every the arts are for everybody, not just for the rich. Yeah, it's for everybody. So you want to have all the campuses to understand the NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, Mid-America Mid Mid arts, arts Alliance as a regional group. And these are all people that give money. Give money to, to support the arts. Their grants that they give, so you know, these, that goes down to the people. One of our biggest partners is the Arkansas Arts Council. Mm -hmm. That is... Uh, is that ArtScan? The Arkansas Arts Council. Uh, uh, is uh -huh. they support the arts in Arkansas. Okay. And there's a there's a board that serves at the pleasure of the governor that is from all different, you know, eight districts in the state. And so who are the, who are, you know, what do they do? You know, they give grants to uh, organizations like the Arkansas Arts Center, the REP. They well, also give individual grants. So there's Do y'all work together with them? We do. We support their efforts and we they keep us informed of what's going on but they're not in political. the state of Arkansas. They cannot be. They, they cannot can. lobby. They cannot go to form a legislative caucus. They cannot do that at all. They are just a nonprofit. Yes. Well, where do they get their money to support the arts? They get it from the NEA. And they get so some money from some, they're okay. using some of the money because that's where the money funnels down through. So your people will work through them to get money or will they your your associate, your nonprofit get money on its own? Now, Arkansas for the Arts is sustainable from membership. And this is from, you know, organizations can join, individuals can join. It's sustainable from membership only. You're getting a phone call. Right. Yep. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Garbo Hearn on Up In Your Business. Do you have a question for my guest? Yes, I do. This is Brother Willie. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Sister uh, Hearn. You How are you? Business? I sure do. One of my best customers. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, I tell you, I, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm so happy that I, I caught the show today and, uh, and everything. And um, I was just listening to you giving a real simple definition about uh, the true meaning of art, as you say, creativity. And, uh, you know, it, it's a divine manifestation from God, which is nature. And mm -hmm. I really feel that art should be taught in the homes. I mean, even before a child goes to school, he should be taught the essence of art. And I just want to let you know I'm going to pass on the word, and uh, we are going to be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, caller, for calling in. Uh, Jason, I think this is a good place to wind the show up. It was a great call from your fan club out there. <laughs> and I think he's right. You need to, you do need to teach it. Now. You need to love and appreciation for beautiful things. I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. So I was going to give you this book called The End of the Line by Berna Love about Night Street. Do you already have that in your bookstore? I don't. You don't? I don't. Oh, I cannot believe it. So we sell this at Arkansas Flag and Banner. It's called okay. End of the Line. It's well, about thank you. Ninth Street. It's written by Berna Love, an yes. author right here. I know Berna, yes. I know the Mosaic Templar has it. You mm -hmm. might want to think about putting I it in your bookstore. I should. I should. Listen, I have another great book 
Do you have these books? We're going to talk a little business here for a okay, minute. Okay, let's talk business. I will give you another book. Okay. So I may give you a couple of books. Oh, my so goodness. This, these are all from Arkansas Flag and Banner. So yes. do you get these books? These little bitty cute for if you're on if you're these are great gift books. We do carry them during the holidays. They are wonderful and gift books. These are it's, great gift books. Graduates, since graduation. It's, yep, since it's yes. since it's uh, since it's uh, on the radio, I'm gonna tell everybody those are like four by six inch books, right. about what thirty pages. That yes. one is the quotes Quotations of, Martin, of Luke. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. yes, and there's quotes from my favorite president Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, he's my favorite president. He was just. He was the last president to do battle on horse, in case y'all didn't know that. Oh, my. I know. Uh, Is this for me? That's for you, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I thank know you, you so carried much. these books in your store, yes, and I want to yes. let you know about them because well, I think you should. You. And this thank book, too. You. Yes, yes. I know Werner really well. Oh, good. Well, I, I thank you for coming on very well, much. Well, thank I, you. Thank you. you. It's been fun. Yeah, it goes. It is fun, isn't it? Yes. You are great. Um, who's my guest next week, Jason? Matt Bell from uh, Chef Matt Bell from South on Main Restaurant. Yes, Matt Bell. If y'all eat at South on Main, he's he's a great cook, and he's got a wonderful wife, Amy Bell. And I saw him the other day. I went down there. He's lost eighty pounds. Wow! And I told him I don't trust a skinny chef. <laughs> <laughs> he said he quit eating when he got off work. He said I used to go home. He said all I did was quit eating when I got off work. I'd get off work at midnight. I'd go home and I'd eat a big old plate of food. He said I just quit eating that meal. The fourth meal. He said, I just the quit fourth the fourth meal. meal. I was like, well, uh. okay. So he's also partners with Oxford America down on South on Main. Uh, we're going to hear about, they have great music down there at South on Main. So we'll hear about their. Yeah, it's a lot uh, of fun. Their music series that uh-huh. they offer. Uh, Jason, will you tell our listeners how they can become a part of the show? If you have a great entrepreneurial story and like to share it with Carrie, you can send a brief bio to questions at upyourbusiness.org, message on flagandbanners.com's Facebook, or make a comment on her blog. That's right. And lastly, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with us. If you think this program has been about you, you're right, but it's also been for us. Thank you for letting us fulfill our destiny. Our hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been enlightening or inspiring and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to flagandbanner.com and click on Radio Show. Like us on Facebook or subscribe to her weekly podcast wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Underwriting opportunities available upon request. Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.